Iran is coming under fire at the U.S.-led conference on the Middle East, which just wrapped up in Warsaw, Poland. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence called Iran, quote, the greatest threat to the region and slammed European allies for not following the U.S. in pulling out of the nuclear deal. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is praising the Trump administration for its efforts to contain Iran. He's also hailing Israel's growing ties with some Arab countries that don't recognize the Jewish state. Little was said on the U.S. peace plan set to be unveiled in the spring. Jared Kushner said both sides will have to compromise, something he has said in the past. Two key players are not in Warsaw, Iran, and the Palestinians. Let's take a listen to U.S. Vice President Mike Pence. The time has come for our European partners to stand with us and the Iranian people, to stand with our allies and friends in the region. The time has come for our European partners to withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal and join with us as we bring the economic and diplomatic pressure necessary to give the Iranian people, the region, and the world the peace, security, and freedom they deserve. Joining me to talk all about that is our senior Middle East correspondent, Mohammed Al Qasim, and still with me in the studio is Emmanuel Navon, an international affairs expert. Mohammed, I want to start with you. Uh, explain to us why the Palestinians skipped Warsaw. Talking to Palestinian officials in Ramallah, they say that this summit isn't about Palestinian-Israeli peace process or conflict. It's all about Iran. And the proof, they tell you, is what they've heard uh, in the last uh, day or two from Warsaw, where it, it's all about Iran, Iran, and Iran. And the statement coming from uh, President Donald Trump's uh, senior advisor uh, on the Middle East, uh, Jared Kushner, about uh, the timing uh, and what to expect from the expected uh, long-awaited uh, peace plan by the U.S. isn't something new and it does not uh, make it a conference or a summit about the, the Middle East process. The Palestinians want a summit that is exclusively about uh, them, about the Israelis, about the conflict or the peace process itself that includes all international players, not just the U.S. and the Europeans and some Arab countries. They also want the Russians, they want the, the Chinese as well as the United Nations. Emmanuel, the Palestinians have basically been boycotting the Trump administration since that Jerusalem capital decision. Uh, and there have been many moves since then with steep cuts in Palestinian aid from the U.S. Now they don't show up at uh, the Warsaw Conference. Do you think that is serving uh, their purpose or their ties even with Israel and the U.S.? Is this a good strategy? I don't see it happening. I don't think so. I mean, I don't see how it serves the... Uh uh, the political goals of the uh, Palestinian Authority. I think ignoring the, uh, the United States is re really ignoring the uh, elephant in the room. I mean, it is a superpower. And of course, they cannot, uh, I think, uh, you know, they have better ties, obviously, with Russia and China, uh, but you cannot avoid the United States and the role of the United States uh, in, in the Middle East. Uh, and I think also that we, we all have to wait for this uh, very much expected uh, the deal of the century, which the uh, Trump administration said it was going to publish after the uh, Israeli elections. Uh, I mean, I think the uh, Palestinian Authority should just uh, wait and, and, and see what the deal is going to look like, or what the proposal is going uh, to look like, uh, before uh, boycotting the uh, U.S. administration. The Palestinian uh, President Mahmoud Abbas and Palestinian Authority had no other choice but, uh, in their mind, but to boycott the uh, U.S. administration. Uh, President Trump made a, uh, a decision that President Abbas couldn't accept, which is recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to uh, Jerusalem. That was too much for President Abbas to continue his communication with the White House. And it would be a political suicide, as many uh, have said, and even Palestinian officials have repeatedly said that this is one of the most difficult uh, decisions that uh, President Abbas uh, had to take. And by the way, President Ab Abbas truly believes that he was betrayed by President and Trump. Right. Well, that seems clear in, in a lot of his statements that he feels deeply betrayed.